Thank you for introduction. Uh, I'd like to tell you something about no sex chromosomes and their possible role in radiations of uh, lower detrusion moths. I should first explain what are lower detrusion moths. So uh, this is higher level phylogeny of Lepidoptera and you can see that like 98% of all Lepidopteran species uh, belong to uh, the group called Detrisia, and then around half or more than half and probably all uh, species of moth and butterflies you know belong to this group Macrolepidoptera and these primitive lineages or basal lineages are then called uh, Lower Detrisia or Apodetrisia and I will talk about two superfamilies uh, most diverse, the most diverse superfamilies in uh, in this lower detrusia, the Tritrichoidea uh, superfamily and Galachioidea super uh, superfamily. Uh, first, I should give you some brief introduction into uh, Lepidopteran cytogenetics. So here you can see <coughs> quite typical Lepidopteran karyotype. Uh, as you can see, uh, the chromosomes are relatively small, uniform in both shape and size. You cannot identify individual chromosomes and most frequently the haploid chromosome number is uh, 31 and it's also thought that uh, this number is uh, ancestral. Uh, well, this is a karyotype of uh, paralyte karyopmos, <coughs> but it's not important for us now. Uh, yeah, and the ancestral karyotype uh, N equal 31 is also supported by comparative studies uh, when uh, genetic uh, yeah, linkage map of uh, diamond back moth, which is here, which is important pest, or uh, peppered moth, Biston betularia, uh, which is model for industrial melanisms where compared to the reference genome of uh, Bombix mori, mori here, silk moth. So obviously they differ from Bombix by uh, the same rearrangements, so uh, supposedly uh, indeed at least the ancestor, common ancestor of this group uh, had uh, chromosome number oh, sorry, uh, 31. And uh, what about sex chromosomes? Well, uh, Lepidoptera moth and butterflies are the largest uh, group uh, of animals or largest group with female heterogamety, which means that female has uh, female specific W chromosomes and male has two Z chromosomes. Uh, what are another important and quite unique features uh, that females ha uh, have uh, a chiasmatic meiosis that means that there is no recombination during female meiosis and female specific W chromosomes is full of uh, repetitive sequences and probably there are no genes or at least there are no known sequences, uh, coding sequences from W chromosome and also there is no dosage compensation uh, between male and females. It will be important later. This is another karyotype, uh, karyotype of codling moth, uh, Cydia pomonella from the family Tortricidae. It's our main model in our lab. And you can see that the chromosome number is reduced to uh, 28, haploid number 28. And there are three pairs of extra large chromosomes. And the conspicuously, the largest one uh, <coughs> uh, was identified as a uh, sex chromosome pair. And it's interesting because uh, such large chromosome pair was uh, observed also or reported also in other uh, species of tortricids. And it was also predicted based on some anecdotal linkage data that uh, there uh, was probably translocation between sex chromosomes and autosome uh, in some uh, in common ancestor of, of tortricidae. So in order to test this uh, prediction, we decided to perform physical mapping of uh, sex chromosomes or of Z chromosome uh, of uh, codling moth uh, using so-called backfish. What is backfish? Uh, it's first an in-situ hybridization with bacterial artificial chromosomes as a, uh, as a probe. Uh, bacterial artificial chromosome is just plasmid with large piece of DNA, like 100 KB of genomic DNA. You select the 
the clone containing your gene of interest, you then label it by fluorochrome, uh, denature it, and uh, hybridize it to the, uh, the nature chromosomes, and then it will label the physical position of uh, your gene on chromosome. And because you are limited by a uh, number of fluorochromes, or uh, more likely by your fluorescent microscope and number of filters, uh, you can repeat the hybridization with different sets of probe, three times max, and then when you merge your results, you have physical map of your chromosomes or part of it. Uh, these are orthologs of uh, Zeppelin uh, genes in or genes Zeppelin in Bombix mori, and you can see that they uh, hybridized one half of uh, this. Uh, chromosome, I should say, uh, these are not mitotic chromosomes, these are meiotic chromosomes. Uh, it's packet in bivalence, that means that homologous chromosomes are paired together. And yeah, here we have a whole uh, nucleus. It's again packet in nucleus with different set of uh, probes. This time, uh, these are genes of, or orthologs of genes of from chromosome 15 of Bombix mori, and again you can see that they uh, hybridized one half of the bivalent. Here there is overlap. We have here hybridized chromosome, uh, ribosomal protein P0 and uh, shaker, and they both hybridized to single chromosomes. And this is uh, female nuclei or nucleus, and you can see this is WZ bivalent and the signals are only on one thread of the bivalent, which means that they are maternally uh, inherited copies or alleles probably degenerated to the, due to restriction of recombination. And here, uh, when you measure relative uh, position uh, of signals, you can make such a nice scheme. So you can see again that really uh, chromosome the chromosome of Cydia pomonella uh, consists of uh, chromosome 15 and the chromosome of Bombix mori. And we were interested uh, in the origin of this uh, rearrangement. So we used quantitative PCR to, uh, in fact, determine uh, the copy number of uh, Zetlik gene uh, uh, in relation or, uh, to autosomal reference. Uh, if the gene is autosomal, then uh, the ratio between uh, in males and females should be one to one. If it's Z-link, then uh, males should have twice as much uh, copies as a female. And here it is, uh, uh, we developed this technique or tried uh, this approach in codling moth. And then we use it in two other species of tortricid. Uh, from one from uh, is Lobesia botryana, from uh, the subfamily Oleotretinae, uh, the same as uh, Cydia pomonella, the other one is uh, from subfamily Tortricinae. And <coughs> as you can see uh, on these two genes, acetylcholinesterase 1 and Notch from chromosome 15, uh, these two genes are sex linked in all species, which means that uh, <coughs> chromosome arrangement probably occurred in the common ancestor of these two. Uh, subfamilies and these two subfamilies comprise like 97% of all torsicid species. And also if you look at the chromosome number of these species, so in torsicine, uh, like modal chromosome number is 30, haploid chromosome number is 30, which means that the chromosome uh, sex chromosome autosome fusion was probably the first arrangement which differentiated uh, the common ancestor of these subfamilies from the uh, ancestor karyotype. So it pose, poses question on or about the possible role uh, of this rearrangement in radiation of uh, these subfamilies. And uh, well, I uh, found very inspiring some uh, papers on uh, yeah, ecological speciation and uh, neosex chromosomes, for example, in uh, stickleback fish <coughs> fishes, it was shown that turnover 
which means rearrangements of sex chromosomes might promote speciation. And in birds, it was suggested that gene content might be relevant in no sex chromosome maintenance. <coughs> Uh, so, if we look into the, uh, or if we look at the gene content of these two chromosomes, uh, Z chromosome is known uh, for its role in podzygotic reproductive isolation. Uh, it <coughs> harbors disproportionately high number of genes underlying uh, differences between closely related species in Lepidoptera. Uh, also, in some species, female host preference was shown to be Z-linked and also some components of the hemosensory system are Z-linked in uh, Ostrinia nubilalis, which is like model for uh, hemoreception in Lepidoptera. If we look at chromosome 15, it was shown that in Bombyx mori, uh, chromosome 15 harbors uh, two clusters of carboxylesterases and a largest or major cluster of ABC transporters these are gene families involved in detoxification and regulated absorption of plant secondary metabolites. So these are, in fact, performance genes because they affect uh, surviving and growth of larvae on their host plants. And uh, what could be the, the, or the, uh, the advantage of uh, such fusion between sex chromosome and autosome? Uh, it was mentioned in the morning that uh, physical linkage between performance and preference or reproductive isolation genes uh, can generate genetic covariance between traits and thus facilitate ecological speciation or specialization and speciation and, uh, under divergent selection. And we add one more possible <coughs> mechanism. We hypothesize that uh, Following the fusion, this now maternally inherited former autosom, uh, autosomal part bearing performance genes start to uh, accumulate mutations and these maternally inherited alleles uh, ultimately degenerate into pseudogenes and this could cause or will cause uh, environmental stress and therefore there could be or should be selection for some compensation and as I said there is no global dosage compensation in Lepidoptera but it was shown for example in case of metabolic resistance to insecticides that such uh, stress could be solved by amplification of uh, detoxification genes these perfor uh, performance genes and uh, after this amplification some of these genes could acquire new function and it could increase uh, detoxification capacity of larvae <coughs> and enable them, for example, some host shift or uh, broadening of <coughs> broadening of uh, host spectrum. <laughs> uh, and it was really shown in uh, swallowtail, uh, papillo swallowtails, that uh, uh, amplification and functional diversification of uh, cytochrome P450 uh, monoxygenase can uh, serve as a key innovation uh, which in detoxification of uh, secondary plant metabolites which overcome uh, host plant defenses. So it could really enhance somehow the, the radiation of the group. And uh, similar observation was uh, made also in uh, superfamily Galechioidea. I mean, this is karyotype of uh, Tuta absoluta, uh, tomato leaf minor moth from family Galechidae. And you can see that again, there are some, uh, uh, there, are, there is conspicuously large chromosome pair. And uh, similar uh, chromosome pair was observed in several uh, groups uh, across the superfamily Galechioidea. And we were interested if uh, it could be sex chromosomes, so we did uh, a genomic in situ hybridization, and which means that we hybridized labeled female DNA uh, with uh, male unlabeled DNA to the chromosomes. And as you can see, uh, uh, this chromosome was highlighted by female DNA, 
which means that it's, it's female specific, so it's W chromosome, which suggests that uh, the other one is Z chromosome. So again, in this group, <coughs> uh, uh, sex chromosomes are the largest one, so it suggests that there is, uh, again, some arrangement between uh, uh, autosomes and sex chromosomes, and possibly it uh, occurred, again, early in their uh, evolution or in the evolution of the superfamily Galaxioidea. So it might be uh, some more general phenomena, uh, phenomenon which uh, we want to study uh, more. And we are interested in the origin and in common features of the autosome involved in these rearrangements. And I'd like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and also to you, the audience, and to my collaborators or colleagues from our lab uh, of uh, molecular cytogenetics led by uh, Professor František Marec and to our colleagues from the United States, Lisa Ginevan, who provide us Buck Library, and uh, Ken Sahara from Japan, who taught me Buckfish, and, and that's all. <laughs>